Sponsoring. Anything you hear may and will be used against you. Thank you. The 2015 recipient of the best local podcast by the Creative Loafing of Tampa. You are tuned into Happy Hour. Syndicated on IRN and heard around the world on the Happy Radio app. From Chicago to Cleveland to Tampa Bay, you are plugged into Happy Hour. What's up? This is Happy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. For the next hour, my goal in life is to change the way you think about things. For the next hour, I want my rants and my opinions to broaden your horizon. And Happy Hour is an open discussion where I, I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear your opinion. To get into contact with me, it's not hard. It's not rocket science. All you have to do is pick up your phone and give me a call at 856 856- 49 Hoppy. That's 856 49 Hoppy, and I will be sure to take your calls in real time. But here's the deal this is an online talk show. I'm not on the radio yet. I'm not on satellite radio yet. That's the ultimate goal. But I'm not there yet, so I don't have a phone screener. So when I say all phone lines are open, that's when you give me a call at 856 49 Hoppy. That's 856 49 Hoppy. But maybe you're shy. And you don't feel like giving me a call, but you want to give your opinion, it's not hard. Tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And if you get the Hoppy Radio app in the Google Play and iPhone shop, search up Hoppy Radio, H-O-P-P-E Radio. And there you can chat me live. We have a cool chat feature. I don't care if you're in Cleveland or Tampa Bay or Chicago, you can listen to me live and chat me there. All right, we have so much to get into. And this next thing I'm going to talk about, I can't believe I have to rehash it. I can't believe I have to discuss it again. But I'm sorry. I'm from Chicago. I love Chicago sports. But man, Chicago fans might be some of the most biased and the most homered fans when it comes to rooting for teams and not wanting to believe that their heroes, these superstars on the teams, might be scumbags. They are so hypnotized, and they are so out of touch, it is sad. It's not all Chicago fans, but oh my God, do people drink the Kool-Aid up in Chicago. It is so sad. It is pathetic. At least with New York fans or Philly fans, they will run you out of town if you do something. But Chicago fans, man, they are cool with whatever. All right. I have to explain, because nobody knows anything about this Derrick Rose rape case, because the media hasn't talked about it, and Chicago fans are trying to sweep it under the rug and believe that it's not there and that there's no truth. Where there's smoke, there is fire. I put up this Facebook post today. The headline was from the Huffington Post. It said, Derrick Rose says the NBA teaches players to take home condoms after sex. And I put this up thinking that people knew that he's being accused of gang rape. But it doesn't seem like anybody knows about it. Because when I put up the link, here's my caption. What an entitled scumbag. Remember when he was the guy everyone looked up to and the whole time LeBron James was the and the whole time LeBron James was the good guy. So basically, five years ago, everybody was on Team Rose, but LeBron James was the scumbag. And I think the problem is nobody knows the details of what Derrick Rose did, so I'm going to have to reread the article to inform you guys that there's a lot of smoke near the fire of this gang rape case that Derrick Rose is in that nobody knows about. Oh my God. Come on. We're better than this. And I'm saying we're as in I'm a Chicago fan. And it's so sad, especially the Bulls fan base. 
Derrick Rose is better than LeBron. Circa 2011, whenever any Bulls fan, we're going to be LeBron, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, Ray Allen. Because we're good. Really? First comment. I'm not trying to be a dick, but he's no different than any other NBA player. He did the smart thing in protecting himself. Did he? Did he really protect himself? He protected himself when it comes to his reputation and trying to get away with rape, allegedly. But did he care about the girl that he claims he had consensual sex with? Did he protect her feelings when supposedly they gave her a roofie and she was passed out and they gang raped her? Like, you know, when you watch a porno and there's like four or five guys around a girl, that's allegedly what they did. But whatever, let's respect his feelings. All right, here's another comment. It is so infuriating. I just think it would be smart to wait till the end of the trial before we label one side or the other side by saying he's a scumbag. Saying all NBA players are self-entitled egomaniacs is just wrong. Every single NBA player is an egomaniac. That doesn't mean you're a bad guy if you're an egomaniac. But people were getting so mad at me. They were getting furious at me when I was saying every NBA player is an egomaniac. They are! You're paid millions to dribble a ball and score points. That will make anybody an egomaniac. There's different levels. You can be like Curry where you're a good egomaniac. Or you can be like Rose where you're in a case where you potentially gang rape the girl. Every player is an egomaniac. And everybody gets so mad in my opinion. Oh my God. And uh, I'm not going to read any more of these uh, comments that I got on my post. Because I'm friends with some of the guys that put comments on there. But frankly, you're a moron. I'm sorry if you don't think Derrick Rose did anything. And maybe you don't know about what Derrick Rose did. And I didn't think I was going to have to rehash this article and reread it. But, oh boy, I'm going to have to. Because it seems like nobody is aware what Derrick Rose potentially did. And all the evidence that is against him. It wasn't just him taking condoms home and throwing them out. It was a little more. This is from thinkprogress.org. The amazing details of the Derrick Rose gang rape case, not just rape, gang rape. It's been a busy offseason for Derrick Rose, who was just traded from the Chicago Bulls to the New York Knicks in June. And while his big talking press conference captured most of the attention, exactly, his whole press conference and him getting traded got all the attention because his PR team is trying to hide the fact that there's gang rape allegations against him. On August 26, 2015, so last year, Jane Doe, the accuser, filed a civil suit against Rose and two of his closest friends, Randall Hampton and, Ray, and Ryan Allen. The suit alleges that two years prior in Los Angeles, the three men drugged her at a party. Then hours later... In the early mornings of August 27, 2013, they trespassed into her apartment and began to gang rape her while she was unconscious. And this case has been going on for a long, long time. It's been going on for four to five months. A lot of times when these girls, quote unquote, make up the times that they may have been raped, that does happen where girls plea foul and then it doesn't happen and they just pay them off. That's when maybe the girls were in rape, when the case goes away for four or five months. But trust me when I say the fact that the girl has not gone away and she keeps filing the info and she keeps going at this case, to me, there's something that happened. Because you wouldn't waste your time and your lawyer fees trying so hard to get somebody in trouble. The case, which has generated TMZ headlines such as Derrick Rose Accuser consented to group sex goes on trial on October 4th, so it's happening right now. In June, Rose filed a motion for summary judgment alleging that the case should be thrown out. Whatever! I may have gang raped her, but just crumple it up, all the evidence against me, and just throw it out, pretend it never was there. The motion was denied because the judge concluded that there was a genuine dispute of material fact to the central issue in his action. Whether the plaintiff consent, consented to sexual intercourse in the early mornings of August 27, 2013. 
with interest in the case that has been picking up over the past few months. It has been largely ignored by the media. That they are arguing if the girl's name should be out there or not. And Derek Rose's lawyers wrote that they do not think any media restrictions are warranted or necessary because the media has, to some degree, lost interest in the case. It's not that the media has lost interest in the case. It's the fact that the media is afraid to cover this because the media in sports is so cookie cutter and so safe that they're not going to be talking about gang rape at 6 p.m. on Sports Center. The media didn't lose interest. They're afraid to talk about this. But Rose's case demands attention. In the past six months, as the two sides have prepared for trial, it has become readily apparent that the case shares dangerous issues and dangerous similarities to other cases of sexual assault by famous athletes. Here's one of the issues. The battle over the Jane Doe name, if it should come out. Rose's attorneys want the alleged victim's name to be a matter of public record and used freely in the upcoming trial. Currently, Jane Doe's attorneys are offering a compromise, saying that the alleged victim's real name can be used in the trial, but that access will be limited and the media will be required to use the name Jane Doe. Rose's lawyers have not agreed to the compromise. These are their feelings that they said when they gave this motion. This is the quote from the lawyer. This is not a rape case. It's pure and simple pure and simple extortion by the plaintiff who wants to hide behind the clock of anonymity, the clock of being anonymous, rather, while seeking millions in damages for a thing that never happened. So basically, they're trying to slut shame her, and they're saying, oh, if you're so tough, let's get the name out there. I don't think people know how bad rape is for women. I don't think people are aware how traumatic it is. Just saying. On August 26, 2013, Rose invited Doe and her friend Jessica Groff to his rental house in Beverly Hills. Rose sent a pickup car to get Doe and her friend, but the car went to the wrong location and ended up being three hours late. While they were waiting, Doe and Groff drank vodka and once in the car, Doe drank an individual serving a wine. They also drank more beer upon arriving. This is the only thing I will say against Jane Doe. When you are going to an NBA player's house, a guy who wants to bang you, you can get a little bit faded, you can get a little bit drunk, but when you're drinking this much, you've got to be smarter than that. That's all I'm going to say. No matter how the plaintiff chooses to depict her sex acts on social media, they claim that she is hiding behind a keyboard and the protections of being anonymous. The parties disagree over whether consensual sex occurred at the party that night. But after a few hours, Groff and Doe went in a cab. Jane Doe and Rose continued to text. She wanted him to come over alone while he wanted to send his friends to come get her and bring her back to the house. She fell asleep in around two. Rose, Hampton, and Alan, his three friends, arrived at her apartment and spent about 30 minutes trying to wake her up to get her in. Man... If you're going to a girl's house at 2 a.m. with your boys, maybe knock on the door for five minutes, but at some point, you've got to realize it's 2 a.m. and she's sleeping. It's kind of weird how you're that into waking her up. You're an NBA player. You can get any girl you want. It's kind of weird about the fact that she kept, they kept knocking on her door trying to wake her up. It's a little bit forceful. Like, can't you just admit defeat and give up? Is it that important to have sex with a girl at 2 a.m.? It's kind of weird that they spent a half an hour trying to wake her up. But hey, maybe that's the norm with NBA players. Once they arrived at her apartment, the three men proceeded to have intercourse with her. They all claimed it was consensual, but she denies it. And she denies that she was even awake for the encounter. Whatever! Potentially three guys using every orifice of her body. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> no big deal. All right. I have some of these text messages that Derek Rose sent. And oh boy, is he into kinky sex. He is not just into cowgirl 
or doing it from behind with her. He's not just into that, like anything that any guy is into. He's into a sex belt. The girl says to him, or here's what he was said in an interview. You told her to get the sex belt. Is that what you said? And Derek Rose said, yeah. And they said to him, and did she ask you to bring money because you bought it for her? And here's what Rose said. So Rose bought a sex belt for that night. And here's what he said about it. I kind of assumed that I was going to look out for her, for getting it for her. We both knew that we were going to use that belt for something. And here are the texts. And before, I didn't read it in the full term. Before, when I first talked about this, I kept it clean. But the fact that Chicago Bulls fans want to sweep this under the rug and the media is not reporting about this, I feel like I got to be uncensored. Furthermore, Rose revealed in his deposition that throughout the course of their relationship, he had pressured her to send him sexual videos, but she never did. At some point, he even bought her a MacBook just so that she could use fingers on herself on Skype. He's really, really forceful. If this was a regular dude doing this, it wouldn't be any better, but maybe that regular dude can't get any other girl, so he's obsessed with that girl. It would be just as bad, but you go, okay, the guy has no other chance with any other girl. I get why he keeps going for the girl. But you're Derrick Rose. You're an NBA superstar. All you have to do is throw money in the club and any girl will... Any girl will bang you. There's something wrong with this dude when you are that into banging this girl, trying so hard, buying her MacBooks so she can do finger play on the video camera on the iPhone, buying her a sex belt, knocking at 2 in the morning for 30 minutes to wake her up and potentially gang raping her. To me, that's a little bit creepy. If any other dude did this, if some dude from a trailer park in Chattanooga, Tennessee did this, we would want to castrate him. But when it's everyone's favorite, Derrick Rose, we just sweep it under the rug. Obviously, he could be innocent. Obviously, maybe none of this happened, but there is a lot of evidence. There's a Here's what he said. Here's what Jane Doe said. But she says in her deposition that she could not get comfortable doing this, and she was only able to get down to her bra and panties. I tried to, like, um, like, um, reveal myself, and it was, uh, weird. But he was really annoyed by it. He would get really mad when I wouldn't take off my clothes. He was annoyed that I wasn't doing it right, and he would specify that I need to do it right. Exactly! Derek Rose... If you can't get with her, or she's not doing it right, you can just go on Pornhub after. He's really forceful. And now, if I was on terrestrial radio, I would not read these texts uncensored. I didn't read them uncensored last time, but here is the deal. People seem to want to defend Eric Rose and believe that it's not true. Here are the text messages that he sent her. Here's what Derek Rose sent her at. 106 p.m. on June 20th, 2013. I can't wait to give my pussy, girl. June 20th, 2013, 10 minutes later with no reply. Send me a video. Two minutes later with no reply. Send me a video. Five minutes later with no reply. I want to see you coming. Five minutes later with no reply. Let me know when you send it. Five minutes later. Was you able to send it? If I did that to a girl I'm talking to on a Tinder or Bumble, and I was that forceful, and I bought you a sex belt, and I bought you a laptop, and I knocked on your door at 2 in the morning, you'd find that creepy. Or any other dude that did it, you'd find it creepy. And if I kept sending you texts like, I can't wait to get the pussy, and I want to see you coming, you'd be freaking out. But when it's Derrick Rose, just uh, sweep it under the rug. Also in June 2013, Rose asked Doe to bring a friend along to visit. The two did not consent to group sex. Here's what Derek Rose said. I wanted her to bring a friend for a threesome. And did she, Derek? No, I mean, but she did bring her, yeah. Um, yeah, she did. So basically, Derek Rose is babbling in this answer. They said, did she bring her for the threesome? And he goes, no, I mean, um, yeah, she did, uh-huh. So he's just lying through his teeth, it seems like. But he could be innocent. And did you try to have a threesome with her? 
Well, it didn't play out that way. Nah, I didn't try. Very, very forceful. Have you ever had a threesome or foursome with a girl? Nah. All the other times that you pushed that issue with her, she refused. Isn't that right? Yeah. Here's what he said about the fact that she had a blood alcohol level of 0.20. A 0.8 is what can get you a DUI. So she was more than twice that level. Here's what his quote was about the fact that he may or may not have done this. Here's the, here's the quote he had about the fact that they were knocking on her door, trying to get her to have group sex. Here is the quote. You ready? Because I don't know if you're ready. This is Derrick Rose, the guy that was supposed to be better than LeBron James. LeBron James was the monster for leaving Cleveland, and Derrick Rose was the humble kid from the south side of Chicago that was a mama's boy. Here's what he said. I said, we men, you can assume. Like, we leaving to go over to someone's house at one. There's nothing to talk about. We men. <laughs> My cat's excrement has better grammar and a higher IQ than this moron. We men, that's no excuse for potentially doing this. We men. Okay. Here's what the girl sent him. What y'all trying to do? Hit me up when you're by yourself. What you up to? You trying to come back? Here's what he said to her friend. She was not anything. Fuck that bitch. I left my belt and my shit in your bathroom. I left it in her bathroom. You need to come get me right now so I can get it. Come with him, babe. I need to see you. I need to see you coming. I want you to come here. I need to see you. I need to see you. And then it says here that he called her over and over again. At 2 in the morning. And here's another thing they asked them. Did either one of your friends tell them why they wanted to go to her house in the middle of the night? Nah. He really has good answers whenever they ask him any deep question. He goes, nah. Very well thought out. So they said, it's the middle of the night. Let's go to the plaintiff's house. And then they never gave you a reason? No. But we men, you can assume. Just looking over here. Derek Rose. I'm hungover. Didn't make it to work. And yo girl is blowing up my phone. They never paid me back or for Kendra's taxi. What did they have to pay you back for, Derek Rose? You make millions, dude. You make so much money that you can do anything you want. Does it really matter if maybe you spent up to 200 bucks on the taxi? And 200 bucks on a sex bill? No. Here's the article I put up. Here's the article I had that got people riled up. It seemed like people didn't know the details. That's why I had to reread that article. Here's the article that I was referring to because I thought people knew about those details. So I was kind of continuing on, but today people freaked out on Facebook. I was trained to do it, says Derek Rose. As he tells the gang rape courtroom that NBA players teach his players to take home their condoms after sex. And I could see if you were to put up that after, if I were to put it up on Facebook and you had no idea what happened with Derrick Rose, you would think it's no big deal. But it kind of shows that they're trying to hide the evidence, you know. Chicago Bulls turned Knicks player Derrick Rose spoke in court on Tuesday. I would love to get that um that uh that uh that uh audio of him uh you know cuz uh he can't finish uh, a sentence uh cuz he has a grammar of a ninth grader uh I would love to hear that. They are told to flush or take home their condoms. It's normal in my profession. In the 21 million dollar gang rape lawsuit. 21 million bucks. Where there's smoke, there's fire. And I love the Bulls fans. You never know. That girl could be setting him up. That is the typical sports fan that wants to believe that Derrick Rose didn't do it. 
Maybe he's innocent. Here's the article. The NBA teaches, teaches its players to take home condoms after one night bang so they leave no trace. In my profession, they teach us to make sure you get rid of it. It's normal in my profession. He told the court that after the sex act, he placed the condom back in his wrapper and took it home. Ew, ugh. I'm not going to get any bit descriptive about my sex life. But whenever I've used one, you just get rid of it. You throw it out and you ugh, get rid of it. Who the hell wraps it up and puts it back in the wrapper? Once I'm done doing the deed and you take it off, you don't want to see it. It's grotesque. It's, you're, you're just like, I produce that. That's gross. What person takes the time to break down the used condom and put it back in the wrapper? Kind of weird. Derek Rose, age 28 years old, claimed that in the second day of his trial. And no, Derek Rose claimed during the second day of his trial that in 2008 they were taught to be careful with your condoms, which makes sense. I get it. But it's kind of weird that you're that forceful about making sure that you bring your condoms with you, especially when you're wrapping it up like it's back to being a new condom. Seems like you're trying to hide any white evidence, no pun intended. This girl wasn't one I was going to introduce to my mom or my family. Oh, I bet the defendant loves hearing that in court. I bet the defendant loves it. Hearing that, she was just used as a fling. Casper chimed in. He said, I want to call in. If you're watching Casper, call me at 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-49-HOPPY. I will be sure to take your call. And it's just kind of weird that they uh, take the Magnum and they literally wrap it back up with a wrapper. It's just kind of weird. It just shows pictures of him leaving the courtroom, and he, he looks very ashamed. He looks like he's trying to hide something. And then this came out today. And now, this is crazy. And I am not going to make any allegation. I am not going to even try and imply anything. But when I heard this headline, it reminded me of something from the show Ray Donovan. It reminded me of a fixer. This is crazy. We have a caller on the phone line. Happy hour, who's this? What's up, Hoppy? It's Casper. Can you turn down your radio for me? Yeah, yeah, I turned it down all the way right now. What's up? What's up, man? Just uh, listening to, listen to Happy Hour, you know, figured I'd uh, call in and see, what, see what's going on with you. Have you been watching the rant? Because that's what I'm talking about. Do you have an opinion? I have been, man. And it's, I don't know, I'm kind of indifferent about it, man. I kind of, you know, obviously I'm a Chicago Bulls fan, but that kind of went out the window with with, uh, with Rose a while ago. Um, I don't know. I guess it's kind of, like, a lot of the stuff that you were talking about, I didn't really hear. I, you know, I never really heard about it until just now, but kind of like when you're putting it, I'm kind of with you on this one. I kind of do feel like, you know, maybe he didn't totally gang rape him, but there's definitely something sketchy going on. Exactly. That was the problem. I put this post up on Facebook and everybody got mad at me. But I think they got mad at me, bro, because they didn't know all the de all the details that I just had to read. Come on. Derrick Rose might be innocent, but where there's smoke, there is fire. There is something about this case. I just read you a nine-paragraph post about it. There is a lot of details. Dude, if anything, he is a very kinky and perverted guy when he can't just have normal sex. He needs to buy a sex belt, and he keeps sending her texts in a row. Are you coming? I want to see you come tonight. You have to admit that we grew up watching him, and he was that humble boy that won the MVP and said, I did it for you, Mom. I never would have thought that that would be the guy who would be into sex belts, but maybe it's just me. No, man, I agree, dude. I think it's good that you're spreading, you know, spreading the word a little bit. I definitely was surprised by a lot of the stuff, like those text messages he's sending, and you know, even admitting that he was knocking and trying to wake him up for thirty minutes. Like, there's definitely something going on. While at the same time, it is kind of hard to like when you hear about an athlete like that. Though, usually your head always goes to the first possibility that you said, like, hey, this bitch is just trying to get some money. I don't know, man. This is definitely an interesting case. Uh, Derrick Rose. I mean, shit. 
I don't know, man. I kind of don't doubt it, though, at the same time. We, we don't know any of these celebrities, man. Like, they have professional-ass PR people that handle their public image. But these texts, these texts and what he said to the lawyers is my problem. To me, I'm not going to say that Patrick Kane was innocent, but there was less proof. I think something happened with Patrick Kane, but to me, that's one where I go, eh, I'm not going to talk about it. And I never did because I was afraid of that case. But when there's so much info against Derrick Rose, I'm going to read about it. But I want to ask you this, dude. Have you seen the show on Showtime, Ray Donovan? Ray Donovan? Yeah. Have you seen it? I have. Yeah. Basically, it's a show about this guy who's a fixer in Los Angeles. He makes issues go away. Like this year, there was a boxer who murdered his brother, and he made it go away. Basically, it's about this guy who makes millions helping celebrities get away with things. And, dude. Girl died or some, like, uh, attorney or something died yeah, yeah. that was on their girl case? That's what I'm about to read to you, and I want to get your take on this. This just broke two hours ago. I can't believe I'm even talking about this. I'm not saying Derrick Rose did anything. I don't want anything going against me. But this is getting out of control. This is from the Daily, this is from the Daily Mail. This is great. Or not great in a good way, but this is crazy. Female LAPD de de detective who investigated the rape claims against Derrick Rose was found dead today in apparent suicide. Huh? Isn't that crazy, dude? Yeah, that's catchy, man. That's the thing. We, none of us really, at the end of the day, I think we're all fucking, we're kind of just pawns to whatever we get thrown at us. Like, we were all going to think that Derrick Rose was a nice guy, just how we thought Bill Cosby was a nice guy, or whoever, you know, on to the next. But we don't know these people for real. You know, a lot of them could be fucking monsters that you have no idea about, but they have a good PR team, you know, and they're lovable. But there's celebrities, man, there, a lot of them have, I feel like they have a, some fucked up shit, ha shit happens that we have no idea about. That actually, that you know, that LAPD uh, detective was actually, you know, involved with Derrick Rose or not. And that's the shitty part about all this. You know, we're never, I feel like we're never going to know the truth, you know, to stuff like this. Basically, basically, there's not much to this. There was a gun shot to the chest and it was quote unquote self-inflicted. And they tried to have a mistrial and it got denied. And basically, she was a 20-year veteran of the LAPD. And I will tweet this out, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. But before I let you go, man, here's what I want to ask you. Isn't it just crazy, bro, that me and you both grew up in Chicago, and we saw him play at Memphis almost 10 years ago, and then the Bulls drafted him, and we had a 1% chance of drafting him. And then he took the Celtics to seven games. Then he took the Cavs to five games and played his heart out. And then we got Tom Thibodeau. Then he won the MVP. Dude, it is so, so weird that the guy that we would talk about, because me and you both went to the same high school, that everybody would freak out over in the hallways. And everybody had the Derrick Rose, uh, Derrick Rose shirts. It's crazy to think. That this dude is the same one we were talking about, man. Wasn't it crazy when Bulls fans thought we would beat the Heat, man? It was crazy. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing. It was, I remember when everyone was buying Derrick Rose gear. Then, you know, he snapped his knee or whatever, and all of this shit just stays on the shelf. You know, no one wants to buy his stuff anymore. So, Chicago, I think, kind of overturned on him real quick, too. But I also wrote another thing that um, Rose's attorneys – wanted to do a mistrial, wasn't it because of, like, two text messages that didn't, that the defense, or the, the, the offensive case, you know, the John, her, her attorneys apparently didn't show, like, two text messages or something like that? Yeah, I heard about that too, man. It's just, it's really weird. Here's the last thing I will bring up to you before I let you go. What I found weird, too, is that Derek Rose and his group, they are so big on slut-shaming her where the info needs to come out. That was one of the things that really bothered me, was that they need the info to come out, you know? Very, very weird, that they need her name to come out. It's like, why does it need to come out? Just focus on your guy being found innocent. This whole case, man. I mean, it might be a, it might be a tactic used by them to... I mean, at that, you know, when, I'm, when I first got on, you know, started watching Happy Hour, I was thinking, yeah, I think Derrick Rose is, you know, there's something sketchy. But then when I... I guess now thinking about it, when you said it out loud, that could also be a thing where, you know, maybe his, his defensive attorneys 
really believe that he didn't do anything, and now they're trying to call her out on her bluff. Because it's like, look, if you're if you're if you're not bluffing, maybe you will actually say your name about it. Um, so who knows, man? It's it's going to be a definitely uh, interesting thing to watch and see how it all, how it all uh, unfolds. And I'll definitely be tuning into the uh, happy hours when uh when the newest news comes out about this case. <laughs> I appreciate it. I know you're a guy, you're a jack of all trades. You have your name with a lot of things you're working on. Do you want to plug anything? Honestly, man, I appreciate it, Hoppy, but I guess if you guys need social media advertising, hit me up, nowadays.media. That's the website. Uh, Love Hoppy Hour. Good luck with everything, man. You're killing it. I'm going to keep on watching you. Uh, Good luck with everything, man. Thank you, bro. And whenever you want to call in, I will be sure to pot you up. Sounds good, bro? All right, brother. Hey, nice talking to you, man. Nice to talk to you, man. It's been like five years. Isn't that crazy? (laughs) We have to go have a beer sometime. Next time you're in the city, let me know when you come back to Chicago. I'm going to be there in two months for uh, Christmas, so I'll hit you up, bro. Perfect. Let's go have a beer, man. I'll see you then. Sounds good, bro. Have a good night, Casper. All right, peace. That was my guy, Casper. He was in my gym class. And a bunch of other classes, too. Man, high school is a blur. I don't remember what he was in. I got a comment in real time on Hoppy TV from somebody. He bought her a computer? What a monster. (sighs) Trying not to get mad. It wasn't like he bought her one just because he wants to be nice and he wants to be a baller. He bought her a video because he wanted her to do finger play. And he would get visibly mad when she wouldn't get completely naked on Skype. It wasn't like he bought her a MacBook because she's in school and she's trying to better herself. Jesus Christ. By no means am I patting myself on the back. And by no means am I saying that what I do here is important at all. But what I notice is, is I feel like I'm the one person who speaks the truth when it comes to the news. Like, the guy that just called in, Casper... He heard nothing about this case. He knew nothing about it because the media is not talking about it. And I feel like I come off crazy because nobody else is talking about it. So Hop, so then it's like, oh, my God, Hoppy's losing his mind. No, I'm just reading you the facts. Derek Rose could be innocent. Maybe this is a crazy plan by the girl and all this evidence is misconstrued and it's not true. But like I said, where there's smoke, there is fire. And me claiming on my Facebook post that all NBA players are egomaniacs is really pissing people off. Like I said, there's different ranks of egomaniacs. But when you are on a team of 12 people and you are playing on a team, one of 32 teams, and you're in this great country of ours and you represent the major market that you play in, that would get to anybody's head. Every single NBA player is an egomaniac. I don't care if you're Curry or if you're LeBron James or you're a good person or you're Derrick Rose where there's smoke by the fire. Every NBA player is an egomaniac. Everybody's getting mad over that. (laughs) That's what I love too is the fact that nobody is mad about me reading the details about Derrick Rose's alleged gang rape. But when I called him an egomaniac, oh my God, Chicago Bulls fans got so mad. Shows your priorities when you're mad that I called him and the NBA egomaniacs, but not that he potentially gang raped the girl and that the dead that the detective that looked into the case killed herself today. Whatever, a life is gone forever. But let's get mad at Hoppy, because Hoppy said that all players are e- are egomaniacs. I'm riled up. I'm having a few speech moments, but I'm just so angry at Chicago fans. We are better than this. We are smarter than this. And it is ridiculous. It is sad. It is sickening that you're even trying to defend him. You can defend him if he's found innocent, whatever. But right now, if you defend him, you are a moron and you are drinking the Kool-Aid. And as they say on sports radio in Chicago, you're nothing more than a meathead. All right. And I like Chicago sports, you know. I don't want to rip into Chicago. Chicago gets a bad rap with the crime that happened and the cold weather. But I'm just saying, you've got to be realistic. You can't just pretend it didn't happen. So sick of Chicago fans being like this. All right, call the show. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 
856-49 Hoppy. We're going to come back and wrap everything up. But first, I'm going to premiere my guy, Shady Bones, because he is an up and coming EDM DJ. And I sent out a message on every Hoppy Hour. If you're an unsigned artist, because Facebook won't let me post signed music, even if they have a record deal because they're going to lose five cents in residuals. They tried to shut down the Hoppy TV stream because I was playing licensed music. So I need unsigned artists. Hip-hop, country, EDM, rock and roll, classical. If you want your music heard on this award-winning podcast, all you have to do is email me like this guy, Shady Bones, did. RyanHoppyRadio at gmail.com. That is RyanHoppyRadio at gmail.com. I am going to premiere... 8-Bit Ruins on Hoppy Hour. Right now! Hang on. Hoppy Hour. I will be back in about three minutes. We'll be back in about two minutes.
Happy hour is about to end, and I know you're really sad about it, but hey, you can listen to me anywhere in the world at any time. Get the Hoppy Radio app in the Google Play and iPhone shop by searching up Hoppy Radio, H-O-P-P-E Radio, and there you can listen to me anywhere in the world. You can go to RyanHoppyRadio.com, tweet at me, at RyanHoppyRadio, and guess what my email could be? RyanHoppyRadio at gmail.com. That is RyanHoppyRadio at gmail.com. Also, this show has been brought to you by Simply Prepaid at T-Mobile, and that is in Gulfport, 5014 Gulfport Boulevard South. Call them at 727-331-1934. That's 727-331-1934. Tony Spinney, Patrick McVicker, Ryan and Ryan in the tech department will hook you up with a great deal on pay-per-month service and great smartphones. Maybe you broke your phone or you want a lesson on the smartphone phenomenon, go there at 5014 Gulfport Boulevard South. Also, Tampa Image Factory with the best photographer in the Bay Area, in the Bay Area, Joe Sale. He is at 520 North Willow Avenue. That's in Tampa Bay at 520 North Willow Avenue. That is the guy that made me those great, great press shots back in June, but the best way to get into contact with him is by giving him a call at 813-417-2626. It's 813-417-2626 or go to tampaimagefactory.com. Happy Hour was also brought to you by Solis Graphics out of Duluth, Minnesota. My guy, Nicholas Seymour, he can make you decals or you can purchase Happy Decals for just $2.00. TinyURL.com slash happy hour decal. That is tinyurl.com slash happy hour decal. Also, my guy, Thomas Gorganis of the Burn Fitness Group in Largo. He has been giving me the boxing training and he is legit. He is a good guy and he will hook you up. If you want to lose weight and you want to get into shape, Thomas Gorganis of Burn Fitness is legit. Call him at 727 727- 385-1108. That's 727-385-1108. And it is in Largo. Trust me, boxing is the best thing you can possibly do. It takes out your aggression. It makes you appreciate life and you lose weight. And if you want to see more of Happy TV, it's not hard. Go to tinyurl.com slash happy hour live. That's tinyurl.com slash happy hour live. Every happy TV episode from Facebook and Periscope is on there. And we have a real comment in real time from Mike Bro. He sent me a link and it is about the uh, cop that is found dead that was looking into the Derrick Rose case. So I appreciate you chiming in. And I also have a message from Diana Kimball. She said, you are awesome. Uh, I appreciate it. If it wasn't for Tampa Bay or Cleveland or Portland or London, everyone that listens to Hoppy Hour, it would not be possible. By the way, this has been Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy, saying peace out. Happy hour is not over, but you can always listen 24-7 by getting the app or going to RyanHoppyRadio.com. Happy Hot Topic!